Hello, St. James. It's good to be with you today. Today is a special day in the life of the church. It's the 50th day of Easter. Uh, it is the Feast of Pentecost, which means 50th. Uh, and it is on this day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit descending upon the disciples uh, and establishing the church. Uh, so it is also regarded as the birthday of the church. And it's the day that uh, we take some extra time to remember that the Holy Spirit has guided us through two millennia of history and will continue to guide us into the future and that God uh, promises uh, through the Spirit to be with us whether we gather in our worship areas or whether we're, we're gathered uh, in our um, in our home uh, worship areas that we've created uh, that God is indeed with us and um, and, and uh, empowering us to do the work that uh, that we've been called to do, the work that uh, we vowed to do or w um, was vowed on our behalf in our baptism. And maybe we uh, take some time today to look over those vows, uh, uh, that baptismal covenant that we, uh, that we promised and, and, and bound our lives to. Uh, and then maybe reflect on the gifts that we have uh, that God has cultivated in us, uh, in us individually and in us collectively uh, that, uh, that are for those purposes of building up God's, uh, God's vision for the world. Uh, so it's a rich day and it's a, a rich season uh, going forward as we enter that season of Pentecost. Uh, but today is, uh, is the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, as we uh, talk about the church and the, uh, the topic on a lot of people's minds is when are we going to be able to come back together uh, and worship in person? Uh, and that's a complicated, complicated question. That June 10th uh, date is fast approaching, and that is not a magic date. It was set um, uh, by the governor some time back as the moment uh, from which we were, were not going to be able to enter uh, into, into our worship space. But it is not a magic um, uh, key to, to regathering in person. Uh, and there's a lot of details that still need to be worked out uh, for us to be confident that we can we, we can gather safely and uh, and both as a diocese uh, and as, as as the rector of St. James um, we're not there yet but we are working toward that end and um, I do know this that even when we regather uh, it uh, likely um, because of our capacity keeping that social distance and because of, of other uh, restrictions it won't be the full community and it, and it won't be what worship looked like before this pandemic struck. Uh, so this medium, this uh, uh, remote uh, worship experience will continue to be important and we'll continue to put a lot of energy into making sure uh, it feeds you in some way and, uh, and reflects our community uh, as we are a community whether we can all be in the same space or not. Um, and with that, I just encourage you uh, to continue that spirit of oneness, continue to reach out to one another uh, continue to uh, to extend your hand and, and offer to help and uh, be kind and patient with one another as, as uh, things start to reopen and we have uh, different perspectives and uh, and different risks uh, and, um, and 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 walk forward in different ways that we uh, continue to walk forward with that spirit of oneness um, and with that we begin our worship and on this the 50th day of Easter I bid you Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. circumstances. 
Pentecost reminds us that the Holy Spirit indeed holds us together as the one body of Christ, the living church, despite our inability to gather physically. We miss you, but we realize we are one in the Spirit. Alleluia. Almighty God, on this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good, Good morning, St. James. James. On this day of Pentecost, I would like to share a poem with you by William Blake, entitled Pentecost. Unless the eye catch fire, the God will not be seen. Unless the ear catch fire, the God will not be heard. Unless the tongue catch fire, the God will not be named. Unless the heart catch fire, the God will not be loved. Unless the mind catch fire, the God will not be known. We just wanted to say hi from the Kane family to the St. James community. We hope this finds everyone doing well during this tough pandemic environment. We look forward to getting back into the church pews and saying hi to everyone and seeing everybody on Sunday mornings. I'm gonna go ahead and read the prayers for the people for this weekend. I ask for your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan and Jennifer, our bishops, Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, especially for Donald, our president, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in the armed forces, their families, and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. Pray for justice and peace. I ask for your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, the lonely, the burdened, the anxious, and those in prison, especially during this season. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially Karen, Judy, Helen, Carol, Steve, Bonnie, Omni, Christine, Steve, Judy, John, Joan, Kay, Ansel, Tina, Linda, Fred, Kay, Ed, Barbara, Peter, Marie, and for those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for all health care and emergency workers, those who continue to put themselves at an increased risk to provide essential services, and those facing economic insecurity as a result of COVID-19. I ask your prayers for all those who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask for your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and School, our Stephen ministers and their care partners. I ask for your prayers for the departed, Pray for those who have died and those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for the faithful and growing relationship between First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. We give thanks for our many blessings which we now name either silently or aloud. We thank you for the gift of your Spirit, sustaining us, encouraging us, binding us, and sending us out into the world. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in his own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide with us. During this time, 
May we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together, embolden us as your church to be signs and agents of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us, Jesus our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Greetings from the Kelsch family. We hope you all are doing well and staying safe at home. We can't wait to see all of you back at church again very soon. Our reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any... They are forgiven them. If they retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, for three months we've been worshiping in this way, and uh, each week as I prepare to speak to all of you, I uh, read and reread and uh, study and, and, and pray over the scriptures and Again and again, they have spoken in a, in a pretty profound way to me, and I hope that's uh, resonated as you've read the scriptures and, uh, and heard our words, uh, that they've, they've given you something that sustained you during this time, whether it's the assurance that we're never alone, or whether it's uh, the, the breath of God's love that holds us, uh, whether it's uh, the fact that that love binds us together even when we can't be physically together, or just the hope that, uh, that God has something larger in store for us, that this is but a, a, a chapter, maybe even just a page of a chapter uh, in a much, uh, much, much longer story that always ends 
in God's glory and God's love uh, conquering all. Uh, whatever it is, uh, it has been incredibly reassuring uh, and comforting to be held by, uh, by God's word week in and week out. Uh, but sometimes that's not necessarily what God uh, is doing through, through that sacred text. Sometimes uh, we are being compelled, uh, we are being afflicted. Uh, the love of God uh, nailed himself to a cross, uh, poured out everything, uh, was willing to endure all costs for us, and sometimes following in that love means uh, investigating places that, uh, that are hard. Uh, looking uh, deeply uh, within ourselves about where we are loving and where we're falling short of, of that kind of sacrificial love. Um, and I've read this reading, uh, the readings that, uh, that we encounter today on the, the Feast of Pentecost, uh, with the lens of, uh, of a hurting world, with the uh, lens of a lot of the stories that, that we see out there in the world. Uh, the stories about the reality that our uh, Latino brothers and sisters and our African American brothers and sisters are hurting a lot more, statistically are far more likely uh, to be afflicted with, uh, with COVID-19, that, um, that the realities of their life make them much more susceptible uh, and are, are falling uh, 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 victim in, in much greater, uh, greater numbers, and, and that is, is heart-wrenching. I also look at the reading for today through the reality that uh, our, um, our Asian brothers and sisters and our Asian American brothers and sisters are uh, facing uh, discrimination and, uh, and hatred that they had not faced before as a result of, of, of this COVID virus. Um, and my heart is tight right now as I've uh, been reflecting on uh, the stories that have made it into our news uh, and, and fortunately have made it into our news. Uh, the 74 days in Brunswick, Georgia, where uh, no charges were filed uh, upon the death of, a, uh, of an African-American man uh, jogging. Uh, and the stories in New York, uh, New York City, where in Central Park, a woman uses the all too frequently told narrative uh, of uh, an African-American man uh, 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 attacking a white woman uh, to, to use it as a weapon uh, against this man who's asked her to, to, to fulfill uh, her responsibility to follow the law and to leash her, her pet. Uh, but the way that she quickly uh, used that narrative as a weapon, uh, it, it makes me shudder uh, and to think how quickly that could happen. Uh, and then obviously the absolutely gut-wrenching uh, video footage of a man, uh, a, an African-American man in uh, Minnesota uh, begging for his life uh, as a, a police officer uh, takes that from him. Uh, and, and certainly the outrage that's followed. Uh, so with all of this uh, pregnant, I, I read these readings today and uh, as, as God does, God speaks pretty boldly uh, through, through the text and, and maybe even gives us uh, a challenge uh, as to how we might walk forward, how we might uh, be able to, uh, to make something of this. Uh, and I, I read the gospel and uh, and as we discussed on our Thursday morning discussion, uh, the words that resounded with me are uh, the fact that the Holy Spirit uh, gives us the capacity to retain sins. And sometimes uh, that may be an important aspect of what we're called to do, that, um, that retaining not just the sins of the individuals who have committed these crimes uh, or, um, or done these acts, but the uh, the sin that all of us bear in being part of a uh, of an imperfect society, and uh, and I read these stories uh, not absent the uh, uh, the knowledge that incredible acts of kindness and goodness and benevolence uh, and connectedness happen all over the world every single day, uh, but in the fact that these sins uh, are present and they need to be identified, they need to be illuminated, and we need to sit there with them for a while so that God uh, can work in and through us uh, and, and get to a place of healing, of restoration, of reconciliation, 
uh, of, of building us up to be more one uh, as God calls us to be. And then in that reading from Acts, I see almost the manifestation of, uh, of Jesus's prayer just a week before uh, where he desires so deeply that we might be one uh, as, uh, as he and the Father are one, that we might have that relationship with one another, uh, that bond, that understanding, that desire to understand, uh, to walk in each other's shoes, to hear each other's story, to know each other's yearnings, uh, that we might be one uh, as uh, he and the Father are one. And, then, uh, and we see that enacted today in that story from Acts. Uh, where uh, these scared men hiding uh, for, for fear of the Jews uh, have God uh, break into their lives in a earth-shattering, earth-shaking way. Um, uh, the, uh, the room shakes like an earthquake and uh, a wind comes in and upon each one of their heads is a flame that burns and they start speaking uh, in, in, in tongues and languages they don't understand. Uh, but all of a sudden in this moment, uh, all is clear to one another and they can hear each other and understand each other in, um, in this way. Uh, and then as they leave uh, those uh, door locked doors, as they're provoked out of their fear um, and encouraged out into the world, uh, folks have gathered around in mass because of uh, the, uh, the earth shattering uh, the, the chaos of the moment. Uh, and uh, and as they, they they gather around, they hear uh, they hear in their own tongue words they probably never heard said before, uh, ways that um, that that God's story has been opened up to them uh, so that they can understand, and they have the capacity to share their own stories, uh, to be able to break down those barriers, that barrier of language uh, that had divided them, and so all the other barriers can slowly start to uh, to fall to the ground as they uh, become one, as they represent. Um, and embody that oneness that God desires for each of us. Uh, and in that moment, um, we can see not only um, a joining together, but a healing uh, where there might have been divides or brokenness or resentments or misunderstandings. Uh, and uh, the world uh, heals and becomes, uh, in that moment, a, a place of oneness, uh, Jesus' dream being realized. Uh, and that's the birthday of the church. The birthday of the church isn't a quiet one. It isn't a passive one. Uh, it is an electric one, and it is one that uh, uh, that heals, uh, that uh, that shatters, uh, that that breaks down barriers, uh, that binds uh, us together. Uh, and it is one where God is moving and moving God's people uh, in a profound way. And so as we celebrate the birthday of the church, uh, it's not just a passing anniversary. And it's not just the assurance uh, that God is with us uh, wherever we might be. Uh, but it is a reminder that, um, that we follow a relentless God, a God whose love uh, is poured out uh, for us, whose love uh, didn't passively uh, go to the cross, uh, but allowed himself uh, to be poured out so that all might come within uh, the reach of that saving embrace. And a God that came for all uh, and dream for all of us is that we might be one, uh, that we might be united. And so what do we do? What do we do on this Feast of Pentecost as we turn on the news and we're so unsettled, we're so unsettled by uh, the divisions that still exist? And, and I would say, it's not enough to quickly turn our attention to the good things that are happening in this world, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to move on too quickly, to forgive uh, too quickly. I think uh, one of the things that we're called to do is to lift up uh, and to put a light on that sin, on that brokenness, to acknowledge not just the brokenness of those individuals, but all of us, uh, all of the ways that we've fallen short uh, in uh, our understanding, in our desire to one, uh, with one another, to, uh, to walk uh, and share our common story, to hear each other's stories, to hear each other's pains, uh, to celebrate each other's joys, uh, to seek a true oneness. Um, and so, uh, so lifting up our sins, to holding on to them for a while, to let God work on them, uh, to let God uh, uh, soften our hearts, uh, to let God redeem and heal uh, what is definitely broken in a moment. The second guidance that I get from the readings, uh, beyond knowing that that is so profoundly God's deepest dream that we might be one, 
uh, is that we seek greater understanding, uh, that God wants those divisions, whether it be language or any other division, uh, to be broken down, uh, that, uh, that the divisions of culture and race uh, might not be erased, uh, but that we might be able to understand and hear each other uh, a little better. Uh, I'm reminded that a year ago uh, this month, a year ago, uh, right around now, uh, we were listening to each other in a profound way. Uh, we were uh, meeting with First Baptist. Uh, we uh, were watching a, a, a film on racism. Uh, am I, a, I'm not a racist, am I? And, and we were responding to the way that racism still exists uh, in our life. Um, and, and we heard some incredible, incredible stories from our brothers and sisters from First Baptist and from other places. Um, but what sat with me uh, were some of the words from, uh, from John Thompson who talked about the fact that uh, as he was a professional, uh, as he uh, worked during his, his career, that he didn't have the liberty to call out racism wherever he saw it. Uh, whether it was um, uh, indirect or directly affecting him, he couldn't call out because his first priority was providing for his family, and, and, and sometimes uh, that inhibited inhibited him uh, from being able to, uh, uh, to to see a wrong and, and call out that wrong. That it is um, uh, part of the the work um, of the folks who hold the power. Uh, to be at the forefront of, of, of naming and identifying uh, and working through sin um, because not often uh, is uh, the person who doesn't hold the power uh, able to call it out as freely uh, without cost. Um, and so it is incumbent uh, on, on all of us uh, to be able to name and lift up and, and, and identify and, and, and work through uh, the sinfulness that exists. Um, I also recall uh, Vinnie Holland talking about uh, not only the, uh, uh, the racism and the um, um, uh, preconceived ideas uh, that he had to work through uh, and experienced as a young person, uh, but the anxieties that his family, his wife still carry every time he walks out of the, 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 the front door uh, as an imposing uh, large uh, black man, uh, that's a piece of him that um, that he can't hide, and uh, and when he leaves the house, his his wife worries that uh, that somebody might uh, act uh, in a way that uh, that causes his, him harm because of uh, something that that is just part of who he is, uh, and that's not a reality that all of us live with, but it's a story that all of us need to hear, uh, and it's shoes we need to walk in so that. Uh, we might have greater understanding of, of what still exists in the world. And, uh, and I think at least uh, this Pentecost, those two ideas uh, are what uh, move through me uh, as those winds move through that upper room. Uh, the idea that we need to um, lift up and retain some of those sins, uh, acknowledge corporately some of those sins so that God can work through them um, and through us in them. Uh, and that we need to seek that oneness that requires us uh, listening to sometimes difficult stories, uh, difficult truths uh, that others share, um, uh, truths that we might see, we might not see as clearly because uh, it's it's just not the way that um, that we've experienced life. Uh, but it is in those two pieces uh, that I think we begin what might be uh, the work the Spirit calls us to do. And, uh, if there's anything that this story uh, also tells me, it's that the, the Holy Spirit doesn't come gently, that uh, uh, that, that may not be where uh, this ends uh, for the Holy Spirit who comes uh, with earth-shaking uh, power to, uh, uh, to compel us in love, to afflict us in love, to move us uh, in love in new ways. So I hope this Pentecost does come with fire uh, and re with reverberation. And I hope that uh, our, our lives do shake uh, more, towards, more towards God's love uh, that is poured out for all uh, on the hardwood of the cross, that all might come within the reach of God's saving embrace. Amen. <laughs>
Hail the festival day, blessed day that taught hallowed forever, day when the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace. Though in the likeness of fire, on those who await his appearing, he whom the Lord foretold suddenly, swiftly descends. Hail the festival day, blessed day that taught our Lord forever, day when the Holy From the Father he comes with sinful mystical offering, pouring on all human souls infinite riches of God. Hail the festival day, blessed day that our town Day when the Holy Ghost shone in the world with God's grace. Hark for the myriad tongues, Christ on his chosen apostles, preach to the ends of the earth, Christ and his wonderful world. The spirit of life, oh, praise to the fount of our being, light that does lighten all, life that in all does abide. Hail the festival day, blessed day that art hallowed Remember that life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and may the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Our worship is now ended, and our service in the world begins. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks to be God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.